Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Flossie. This is Siren the Step Fan, my beautiful home on wheels. I'm a freediver and I cannot wait to show you the journey we have for you today. Gosh. To wash all the uh, wetsuit goop off my body. I got to try sea cucumber and sea urchin for the first time. And I... Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to take a step back in time before my bike accident. In the continuing saga of can Flossie get the step van registered as an RV. Today is the day this is getting plumbed in. So recently our local uh, outdoor equipment store had a yard sale meaning they probably take all of the stuff that's been returned to them and sell it for dirt cheap. I mean dirt cheap. Guess what I've ended up with? Which is gonna be so perfect for van life, so perfect for taking around different places with me. Oh my God, I'm so thrilled. Let me show you. outdoor toys you want to go to your local outdoor equipment store ask them what do you do with your returns do you have a yard sale or a end of year goods sale I'm sure they'll do something there is ways to have the toys that you want without paying through the nose I do not have a lot of money and I have the toys that I wanted because I have looked out for deals. Yes, I've been a little bit lucky with timing and all of that, but you can find bargains. You can find ways to get what you want and have fun without breaking the bank. Sometimes you have to be prepared to do some work, research, and wait. Good luck, I hope you find what you want. As you can see, Frank is super excited about heading to the lake. I first saw these kayaks several years ago when I was up in the Sunshine Coast and I was very jealous seeing two people rock into a secret cove 
or I think it was Smuggler's Cove, a very cool place that I was naturally attracted to as a land pirate, and fold up their kayaks, put them in the back of their vehicle and drive away. You've probably heard that whenever two sailboats are sailing side by side, it's a race. Amanda's paddleboard inflates directly via uh, a mechanical uh, pump plugged into her car battery or into truck truck's battery and I was racing her to assemble my Oro kayak. Now I haven't assembled it a whole bunch of times and I think as soon as I decided it was a race I got pretty flustered um, but it's such an easy kayak to assemble and put together it doesn't take very long and the best part about it is it fits beautifully in the garage under my bed in my big van it's so wonderful to have a watercraft that I can take with me anywhere and is light enough to just throw over my shoulder and walk down to the lake they just clip together with buckles there is a couple of bulkheads, a place for your feet to rest so that you can stabilize the boat, a nice comfy seat. I've taken on board with me a little foam sponge in case there's any water on board and a rope in case either of us needed rescuing. I've also brought some flotation um, buoyancy things for both um, ends of the kayak. I just haven't got these in the kayak just yet and I'll put them in before I ever take this kayak on the ocean. Unfortunately my microphone decided to just not record any audio so I have no sound but Amanda was wonderful and took uh, me and Frank to a nearby lake so we could get out do some gentle exercise both for my recovering shoulder and for Frank's uh, arthritis and we all appreciated getting out in the sunshine it was really quite delightful the lake was beautiful and quiet and cool on a hot sunny August afternoon or end of August afternoon. I did not know that our local lakes had this many turtles. Uh, freshwater turtles, they're not very big, probably less than a foot in length. And we saw many of them as we went, as we paddled around the more shallow, uh, reedy areas of the lake. Where logs were jutting out of the water, there were many turtles sunning themselves in the sun. Just the cutest. with one hand does not work. <laughs> it's freaking beautiful. Turtles! Look at them, they're so cute! Oh, they're freaking adorable! They're so cute! Of course there would be turtles. Turtles! Morning everybody. I've had a hell of a, a week. Sometimes you know life just gets really overwhelming. And there's so much to do and everything's moving so fast. And if any of you know about astrology, Mercury has been in retrograde 
and it's really been feeling it. So last night I came last night I came and met up with some friends. And look what I woke up to this morning. I thought I'd show you. This is my back door. Let me show you without the bug nut. I don't want to wake them up, so I'm not going to open my sliding door because it's noisy, but I open the back doors. Because I need to turn my 12 volt power on and the only way to get into it is down there. So, this makes it nice and easy. Oh, it's beautiful. It's pretty freaking dreamy. I'm pretty happy right now. It's nice to be happy after a week of stress. <laughs> and then out my window, are my friends in a slumber queen. And there's more of the lake. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to take a step back in time before my bike accident. I went on a free diving meetup and learned how to harvest and prepare some of our local marine sea creatures. I want to talk a little bit about harvesting and foraging food. You've seen me harvest and forage plants and mushrooms before here on this channel and I am working towards a radical self-sustainability and if the whole world implodes and the world and capitalism comes to an end then I want to know and have the skills to be able to feed and support myself and because we are surrounded by so much ocean here food and eating from the ocean is a really incredible part of that. To me, it is really important to have relationship with my food. Relationship with plants means understanding the life cycle of a plant. Relationship with mushrooms being means knowing which ones could kill me and which ones are safe to eat and then how to har harvest them, how to make sure that they continue to propagate and how to prepare and cook them. Same with berries and vegetables. And so it is no different with sea creatures, knowing what the population's like, how they breed, how to contribute to their ongoing success and their ongoing uh, reproduction and protection. And so things like sea urchins, Sea urchins are now in abundance because some of their main predators, the starfish, have had wasting disease. And so the, uh, the sea urchins are now killing the kelp. And we need the kelp for other parts of the marine ecological system. So eating sea urchins is actually us contributing and helping towards the sustainability of the the life cycle underwater, which us as humans have had an effect on and created an imbalance. So... I am going to this freediving meetup um, on Vancouver Island and it was a lot of fun. It was great to see some people and meet people who I only knew on the internet for a while. And I want to take you through that. So welcome to this journey. There's room for me to park my giant van down here somewhere.
Did you get? Did this one get caught somewhere around here? Yeah. Um, Mark caught it. Mark uh, caught it. Nice. We'll do this fast. <laughs> Making a break for it. Ooh. Gotta keep an eye on those guys. Too smart. <laughs> <laughs> they probably have brains in their butts. Oh my God! What a feast. I wanted to make sure Mark has some. Sushi? So this is a wakame bull kelp flinch. Yeah. And um, a little bit of uh, the boa kelp uh, little uh, olive mm -hmm. uh, mixed together. Amazing. With a uh, uh, um, clementine dressing that I pre made with a little bit of shisho leaf from my garden, which is like the Japanese mint. Uh, just one uh, chili de arbo. Uh, no sesame oil because it's a potluck, nothing vegan, everything vegan. And I use a little bit of soy sauce so it mixed together. Chef extraordinaire. Exactly. The wakame that I just rinse, it's raw. Okay. So that's the uh, sea lettuce okay. that you see like birds eating all the time. There's the bull kelp. I took some of the small blade and I, uh, I cut them and then we blanch them. So it's a green seaweed, so it becomes greens once you blanch it. Okay. And I also have the uh, boa kelp. I kept some of the olive oh, there. Yeah, I know. So it's kind of had a little bit of a, the bitter taste in it. Um, and also I have a clementine, clementine dressing, and uh, it's all vegan. Fantastic, look at this. And then there's a little hot sauce to go with it. If, yeah, exactly, uh, the very sharp. And you've never uh, had this before? I've never yeah. had it before. This is uh, Mark Cantwell, <laughs> admin of the Vancouver Island Freediving Group on our annual, fifth annual beach cookout. All I can say is uh, membership has its privileges. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> If it was made at home, Orange. I would have rinsed it more, but we got a strategy yeah, with the water to do it. And if you want it like a spicy, yeah, yeah, here's it. Because these people are great. Yeah. And you can also squish the clementine on it and get extra <laughs> like, freshness. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Awesome. All right. So, um, I would say that, yeah, go for it. Amazing. Uh, Let me try it. No, but I want to. You want to get into it. Um, Excellent. I was <laughs> do you want to trade? No. <laughs> <laughs> To wash all the uh, wet suit goop off my body. <laughs> no. But this uni is so good. It's amazing. It's not uh, spawny at all. Oh really? Yeah, it's really good. That's I like the. Amazing. I find the pink guys the best. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to. Oh. Oh my gosh. Mmm, oh my god, it's so sweet. Yeah, it's really sweet. I think the mm. pink ones are the sweetest ones. Oh my gosh. Mmm. <laughs> and to fact, that's an invasive species, so eating it is helping the environment, not exactly. killing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's like a luxury food too, it's expensive. Wow, that's freaking delicious. You know, all the other stuff. Well, yeah. except for nori. Got uh, rice. Thanks, chef. <laughs> Cheers, thanks for the prep work. Is that? Look at this deliciousness. This was so worth all of the effort. Yeah. We have fish ceviche, crab, seaweed salad, cabazon, and some sort of vegetable salad and some glass noodles. What a feast! again this time I've stopped somewhere freaking neat and I really want to show you because the view is stunning we are about 1100 meters above sea level and you can really tell the fog from Vancouver uh, and that's Mount Baker in the US I think all of the stuff that you can see in the sea is uh, algae from the heat in the summer because it has been hot 
so hot. Hi, Siren. That was the most amazing trip. It was amazing. I got to try sea cucumber and sea urchin for the first time and I love both of them. They're so delicious. Oh my gosh, it was so nice to meet a whole bunch of new people, some people I already knew, and get out in the ocean. And I think now I need to go put my body in a lake. <laughs> I'm covered in salt. My hair feels like Raw, like it's beautiful and curly and looks amazing, but it feels like it's full of as much salt as my skin is. I am very sweaty, but this drive is just stunning. Hi everybody! In the continuing saga of can Flossie get the step van registered as an RV instead of a commercial vehicle and get propane and water tanks installed is a continuing journey. It's pretty amazing. Found somewhere to park. <gasps> ah, so big. Today is the day this is getting plumbed in. I'm taking it to a shop. I've reached the capacity of what I can do. So hopefully this will all get corked in. And then under here, I'll have this water tank installed underneath and the hot water and cold water should be plumbed in and go into the tap. You want you want this hooked up or you just want yes, lines to? Yes, I would okay. love it hooked up. Okay. Now, we might have to mount it somewhere. Okay. Um, here or over there. This line here, those wires there, are the power. Okay, for the pump? For the pump. Okay, so you have a pump switch? I have a pump switch. Okay. Um, the pump switch will be one of these ones. Okay. So I'm gonna turn the 12 volt power on now and just leave it on till tomorrow. Okay. And then I'll just, I'll and just test just, what one and, and see which one. And you'll figure out one of them will turn the light on. Yeah. And the rest will turn one of them on. Okay. Do you want... And so here's the pieces for the sink. So that... Yay! So I'm dropping my van off here for a couple of days. As you just saw, the shop guy is going to fix it all up, install my hot water tank, and a hot water heater, and a water tank, and do all the plumbing. Ah, I'm finally! I'm so excited! Let me show you the water tank setup underneath the van. Now that it's all fully installed and working, I'm so proud and so thrilled to have running water now in my beautiful home on wheels. I'm gonna do my best not to whack my head. under the van you can see the bracing supports that hold the water tank they are attached to the subfloor and the chassis let me show you This is the party end of the water tank. This blue one is the intake. So how I fill up my water tank. This clear one is the vent. And here you can see more of how the water tank is supported. And the braided cord is the water tank water that goes out of the tank so you can see that even when I run out of water there will still be a tiny bit left and the pump sucks water up this tube into this hole in the floor and I'm going to be spray foaming around this hole and in the next coming months I'm going to also be insulating some of these pipes Yes, my water tank is outside, but I live 
I live in one of the warmest parts of BC, so if the water tank or the water might freeze, it's only going to be a very small, it's only going to be a very small amount of time in the year that it's actually going to be that cold. So I feel pretty confident about it. We are quite far south um, and we only really get a week or so of snow. And so in those periods of time, I will not be using this and I will winterize it. My waste water drains directly out of this and because I park rurally and I do not park in the city, uh, this is fine to drain straight to the ground. If I was ever parked in a city, I would just not pour any water down my sink. And there we have it. Thanks everybody so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. We covered a lot of things from van life adventures to freediving. Go away wasp. Van life adventures, freediving, getting out and about, kayaking, and I cannot wait to continue this adventure in the future sometime soon because the next update on the van will be propane i will finally be able to use my cook stove i'll finally be able to have my water heater running and the after thing after that will be my power system you might have picked up in the background of some of my videos some sneaky hints comment below if you've worked out what those are i'm not going to tell you right now you have to go back and look um but I love you all. I really appreciate your support. Thanks so much for watching. Please comment your favorite moment be below. And a huge big thank you to all my Patreons. You are an encouragement and uh, an emotional support. And I'm so excited I get to share some behind the scenes updates with you all. Secret videos which will never ever become public. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.